Hello everybody, we've got a new death blog from the old school RuneScape team. This is Content Poll 32. So, one of the most highly anticipated updates ever to be proposed for old school RuneScape, Resizable Mode, is set to be polled this Thursday. They're also including shared slayer tasks, a circle buff, and lots lots more. So let's start off with Resizable Mode. Resizable mode is something that has been asked for by many old school players for quite some time. Late last year, Mod Jack Mob spent some time working on giving us the engine capabilities to make resizable mode a reality in old school, and they're now looking to deliver that update. Old school RuneScape is currently fixed to one size. Resizable mode would allow the old school game client to be expanded to fit the size of any window, giving you the option to make the game size that best suits you. It's worth noting that resizable mode does not allow players to see further into the distance. When using resizable mode, the distance at which players are visible will remain the same. Resizable mode will have a new interface that will adapt to the size of the client. At this point, they do not know exactly what the interface will look like. However, they will be doing all they can to use the existing elements of old school to carry over the old school feel to resizable. They'll be providing plenty of screenshots of the resizable mode and the interface throughout its development. In the future it will be possible for them to create new, different interfaces for resizable mode, but for now they do not want to delay the release of resizable mode to create more styles of interfaces. Of course resizable mode will be toggleable. If you wish to continue playing with the same game frame that you always have in old school, you can simply choose not to enable resizable mode. So in the next poll they will be asking the question, should they add resizable mode to old school RuneScape? A toggle will be made available to turn resizable mode on or off. I think that resizable mode would be quite a good thing for the game. Of course we are playing an older game, however a lot of people have higher resolutions and it's making the game we're playing very small compared to the rest of our screen. Of course we can change our screen resolution and such, but it's not quite the same feel. Next, Slayer Partners. Slayer is the favourite skill of many old school RuneScape players, but it's never been something that's easy to enjoy with your friends. They'd like to offer the ability to partner up with a player so you both receive the same Slayer task. When you and a friend do not have a Slayer task, you'll be able to partner up by one of you using a Slayer gem on the other. Once the partnership is accepted, you will then both be assigned the same Slayer task when talking to Slayer Masters. Note, while you'll be assigned the same Slayer task, your tasks will be independent of each other. If a player has a task blocked, and their partner receives it as a task, they will simply not be assigned a Slayer task. It will only be possible to share a Slayer task if both you and your chosen partner are on the same world. Only Slayer Masters that you both have the requirements to use will be able to give you a shared task. So the up and coming question will be, should they add the ability to pair up with another player, allowing you to both receive the same Slayer task from a Slayer Master? Now I'm kind of against co-op Slayer, I know they've pulled it in the past and it failed. However, a lot of people complain about not being able to do tasks with each other, and I know a lot of players enjoy doing things like duoing bosses together whilst doing Slayer. And for those people, it can be a bit of a pain to get the same task. So I'm a little unsure which way I'll go on that. Next, the Circle upgrade. The Circle is an item dropped by the Dagonoff Supreme that has never had much use. The special attack of the Circle lowers your target's magic level by the damage you deal. This is tricky to apply in a useful way, and as a result, the price of the Circle has never been representative of the difficulty of getting your hands on one. They would like to offer the ability to combine the Kraken Tentacle and Circle to make the Soul Call. Using a knife on a circle will create a circle U. Using a knife on the Kraken Tentacle will create three Kraken Sinew. Kraken Sinew can then be used to string the circle U, creating the soul kill. A normal bowstring can also be used with the circle U to create the circle back. Stringing an unsung circle does not give you any experience. So why would we do this? The soul call is different to the circle in several ways. The attack speed of the soul call is 3, slightly faster than the 4 attack rate of the circle. The special attack of the soul call, when used against players, consumes 75% special attack energy and drains the target's prayer points by 50% of the damage you deal, and magic level by 100% of the damage you deal. The special attack of the soul call, when used against NPCs, consumes 75% special attack energy and drains the target's defense and magic level by the amount of damage you deal. A soul call has a 1 in 6 chance of poisoning your target. A soul call reverts to a circle U after 10,000 arrows have been fired. And the soul call requires both 50 range and 52 prayer to use. If a player were to die with a soul call, a circle U will be dropped. So the question they'll be asking in the up and coming poll will be, should it be possible to upgrade the circle to the soul call using Kraken Sinew as described in the recent developer block? Now I quite like this idea, I think they're making it so it consumes Kraken tentacles, so they start coming out of the game and hopefully will rise in price, and it's also doing the same for the circle. 
It's also creating a new mid to higher level range weapon. Now to me this sounds like quite a good weapon, not very overpowered. The one thing I'm rather unsure about is the fact that it's got a 1 in 6 chance of poisoning your opponent. Personally I think if you want to poison people then you should just poison your arrows. Next, Tanzanite and Magma Serpentine Helms. The Serpentine Helm is a popular piece of equipment for high level players. With some great stats and very useful effects, it's the best melee helmet in the game. The boss, that is the source of the helmet, Zora, has three different appearances. Rotating between range, melee and magic, Zora changes appearance with each change of attack style. A common request has been to allow players to choose between three different appearances of the Serpentine Helm with each appearance resembling a different phase of Zora. After seeing many requests for this, Mod Ghost got to work and created two alternative styles of the Serpentine Helm, one resembling the Tanzanite phase of Zora and one resembling the Magma phase. These two helmets have the exact same stats and effects as the Serpentine Helm. They'll only be different visually. The helmets will be created using Tanzanite Mutagen or Magma Mutagen which will be dropped by Zora. Tanzanite Mutagen and Magma Mutagen are consumed in this process and cannot be retrieved. So the question you'll be asking in the up and coming poll will be, should Zora drop Tanzanite and Magma Mutagens used to change the appearance of the Serpentine Helm to match the Tanzanite and Magma phases of Zora? This would not change the stats or effects of the Serpentine Helm. Now I quite like the idea of having the different helmets. The only thing I've been a little unsure about is the fact that having three different looks for one helmet just seems a lot. It's definitely entering the realm of fashionscape. Next, Achievement Diary Animations. In addition to making the lovely new Serpentine Helms, Mod Ghost has created some new animations for a few spells introduced with Achievement Diaries. The new Lunar Spells, Tan Leather and Recharge Dragonstone are currently using recycled animations. Mod Ghost has made some brand new, unique animations for these spells. He's also created an animation for the Fountain of Rune Teleport that is unlocked after completing the Hard Wilderness Achievement Diary. So the question will be, should the spells Tan Leather and Recharge Dragonstone be given new, unique cast animations? And should the Teleport to the Fountain of Rune unlocked with the Hard Wilderness Achievement Diary be given a new, unique animation? Now I quite like the sound of that. I feel that Old School's got a lot of recycled animations, mostly because we didn't have an artist for a long time. And I quite like the idea of having more animations in the game. Personally what I'd love to see is having the rooftop agility courses having their own unique animations. And finally, the other poll questions. After completing the medium Varrock diary, should you be able to toggle your Varrock teleport location to just south of the Grand Exchange? Now, I'm not really a fan of that, partially because I'm not really a fan of the Grand Exchange, but mostly because I think it's just too convenient. There's plenty of really close teleport locations such as Varrock, Edgeville and even the Gnome Tree. Should the Crystal Halberd be given the same special attack as the Dragon Halberd? This special attack consumes 30% special attack energy, hitting enemies larger than a 1x1 twice and hitting enemies beside the target. Should you be able to place permanent ropes on the Calphite lair after completing the Elite Desert Diary? Now it is a pain getting your ropes there, and having the Elite Desert Diary as a requirement to keep your rope there is a nice idea. Next, should Bando's God Sword special attack only consume 65% special attack energy rather than the current 100% to improve its viability? Now I'm a little bit unsure about this because obviously it's a very powerful weapon. However, it's not the most powerful god sword and I've just checked what the AGS uses, which is generally quoted as the most powerful, and that's only 50% special attack energy. So I think this would be quite good for the Bando's god sword. Next, should Oziak's store sell anti-dragon shields? This store would only be accessible after completion of Dragon Slayer. Next, should alchemy spells cast at the Fountain of Rune alk two items if they're stackable? Casting spells at the Fountain of Rune does not grant any experience. Effectively meaning when you out something, you complete two items per cast. Now obviously that's some kind of way of getting more people to go there, to get the Alking done faster, and luring them into the wilderness. Personally I don't mind either way, I doubt many people will really go there just to get the Alking done quicker. If you're Alking a lot of stuff, you might as well do it in a nice safe place. Next, should the female Armadillo helm be made more similar to the male helm? So this is the original female helmet on the left, and the original male helmet is on the right. As you can tell with the female helmet, it's very much open at the back and a lot thinner. Whereas the male helmet is a lot wider and closed off. So they're suggesting that they make the female one a bit more closed off and slightly wider. Just to feel more like the same helmet. Next, should redirect house teleports have letters added to their inventory models to represent the destination? Now I like the idea, however there's a few, such as Remington and Relica, that have the same letter. So they're going to have to be careful when they make those. Next, should a coloured message appear in the chat box to make it clearer when you have been teleblocked? 
Should the alchemy and drop warnings on items use the grand exchange value of an item rather than the alchemy value? I don't mind really, it depends which one's higher. Next, should the deposit box found at the Barbarian Assault be turned into a bank chest? Now obviously that would be very useful, however I think that will be quite a powerful bank. For example, if you're killing things at the Waterfall Dungeon, you'll be able to bank really quickly. Next, should the demi bosses be added to the boss lock? Next, should a Do Not Ask Me Again option be added to the warnings when entering the Wyvern Cave? Should it be made possible to get multiple bear heads at a time? Now I'm not really sure what it takes to get a bear head, but I'm sure having multiple bear heads will be fine. Next, should monsters in wilderness levels below 5 be moved further north to prevent them interrupting PvP combat? Now I can't really imagine how that's going to prevent a lot of PvP combat. Perhaps on worlds specifically for combat, but a lot of the time, for example when I'm runecrafting, I end up getting skeletons just to be safe when I know there's a PK around. Because I don't want a PK just to troll me when I'm just trying to do runecrafting. So I don't think that's that good of an idea. And finally, should the ability to use fairy rings without a lunar or drainer spell be added to the rewards for the elite lumbridge and draenor diary? Now originally that was on a quest in RS3, and I would love for a quest to come into the game. However, the elite diaries are a lot of effort to do, and I believe that the lumbridge and draenor diary actually require the quest cape. So if someone earns the ability to use fairy rings without a lunar or draenor spell, they've done all the quests and they definitely deserve it. This has been a really interesting dev vlog. I quite like the fact that they're working on resizable and various other improvements and they're not really going for something big and in-game at the moment. Just lots of smaller updates that can really help the game along. If you've enjoyed this video please like and share and if you want to keep up to date with the old school runescape updates, dev vlogs and polls please subscribe. I've been Lewis, thanks for watching, goodbye.